Hello Valued Viewers, so the next project on the Nissan is the seat connections, the seat rail connections to the car. Problem is uh, that they've got these uh, M10 safety bolts with a pitch of 1.52 mil. Problem is the seats have been in and out so many times that the thread on the um, the bolt is screwed, uh, the male and female. So if we went to have a look, you can kind of see that screw thread there. It's been completely screwed. If you excuse the pun, it's completely knackered. And that's no good in any circumstance, especially for a safety item like a uh, like a seat. It's got to be really perfect. So what we're doing is we're using a tap and die set. So that's a tap and die set there. In case you don't know, these are the taps. There, these are the dies. There, there, and there. You've got to choose the right one. So I've chosen M10 with a 1.25 mil pitch. And the pitch is just the distance between the teeth. And what we're doing here. As you can see, we've lubricated this particular one here up with just basic oil, normal oil. We're supposed to use cutting oil, but whatever. And, and all I'm doing is a tapered front, so it's, it's a progressive um, uh, tap. And I do a full turn, then I go back 180 degrees, full turn again. And then back 180 degrees, and you go back so that you can clear out the waste that you've created. Full turn, and back 180 degrees, full turn, back 180 degrees, full turn, mm -hmm. and repeat the process and turn you all the way through. Oh, we should have that then is a lovely new, feels like I'm all the way through now, I'm not cutting anymore, so just make sure I'll go all the way through, okay, now out we come, nice and lubricated, and what we should see is a lovely new thread in there, for Mike 10 safety bolts, fingers crossed, now this doesn't always work, it depends on the state, this one wasn't too bad, it depends on the, how much damage has been done, but fingers crossed. Uh, what we need to do actually is clear out all the chaff in there. So I'm going to do that and then uh, report back. I cleaned out the thread as best I can. There's still some tiny bits in there, but it's going to be okay to try a bolt now. So we're going to try a bolt in now. It's a seat belt bolt. It's okay. Let's just get a, get a ratchet on that. Brand new thread that is, brilliant. So that one done. Um, now we're going to go through. We've got six more, five more to do now. Um, we don't need to do any dyeing because the, the males, which are kind of in there, they're okay. They haven't been stripped. And let's hope they all work out. Okay. Okay. Welcome back. Didn't really go to plant. So using the uh, 10 mic 1.25, didn't have enough. It's just it's just too ruined basically. The thread. Uh, there's nothing I can do save that. So what we're going to do is upscale to the next size. We've brought some tools in. I'm going to try drilling, uh, pre-drilling this with a 10.9 mil drill now, which will set me up for a uh, mic 11, so 11 times 1.25 mil. We're going to try that and I've got some bolts that match that. Uh, it has to be fine thread, it has to be 1.25, which is why I've had to buy these in specially, because these are seat belt bolts. You have to have fine thread on a seat belt, belt to be legal. Um, and if that doesn't work, we're going to go to an 11.9 mil drill, which I've got as well, and 11.9, is that right? No, scratch it, sorry, I'm being a douchebag now. Let me try that again. So I need to pre-drill for the so for this 11.25 I need to pre-drill at 9.9 mil, basically a worn 10 mil will probably do. So I'm going to do that, and if that doesn't work because it might not, because of reasons I don't really understand, then we're going to pre-drill 
and go for the mic 12 by 1.25 so I've brought everything in just in case this doesn't work basically okay that worked pretty well so that's now a mic 11 times 1.25 fine tooth there and it looks pretty good to be honest um, you know if you went mic on perfect it's probably not mic on perfect but I'm pretty sure it'll be within four strikes right first fit so this is a mic 11 times 1.25 from a Nissan 350Z Fairlady seat belt bolt which is slightly larger, one mil larger. Ooh, bit of resistance there. Threaded that, I think that's right. Let me just try. I need a little clamp or something on my camera. That what I need is a dog's body. Hold the camera. I think that's good. I think that there is good. Let me take it out to make sure it's threaded. A bit stiff, but all the best men are. Check what it's done to that thread. Fine, it's not damaged it. Check in there. There's probably a bit of chaff still in there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, look. Got almost all of the teeth back. So I think that'll do us to there. Now the awkward bit is I've got to do that one as well. I'm not happy with that one at 10 mil, so that really needs to go to 11 as well. The problem with it being that I've got no, because the dash is in the way and I really can't be bothered to take the dash out. So I've somehow got to find a way of doing that, stand by. Okay, let's see it, but that one there, final one's also been done up to 11 mil now and I'm pretty happy with it. So we've got all, oh, I've been rethreaded to 10mm and two I've needed have gone up to 11mm. I think that's it as far as the mounts are concerned. Next we need to uh, go and look at the seats. Okay, these are the seats. Uh, they're a weird hybrid. They are seats from a 2005 Honda Civic Type R. I broke down for parts a while ago, been crashed. And I thought, oh, they're nice seats. Why don't we put them in the Nissan? Problem is, this is a 90s Nissan with Nissan, 90s Nissan safety regs and height and stuff like that. And these are 2005 seats with 2005 regs, and these don't fit in that car. So I've had to do some, I did this a few years ago, but some real modification. I made these rails up myself. They came from uh, another Nissan, actually, that was near enough a fit. Chopped them up, and what I've done is I've hard welded them onto the seat. So I took the Honda rails off this and just literally welded them onto the seat frame. You can see a couple of welds there. Just an example, most of it's hidden, so I can't really show you, but you just have to take my word for it. And because it's a safety item, uh, I've just gone over the top, basically. General rule is, if you don't know, if you're gonna do a safety item, like a weld on, some, on, a, on a safety part of the car, and you don't know how strong you need to make it, or how strong your weld is or whatnot, you just go OTT to make sure, you know, a massive factor of safety there. So that's what I've done. Um, Anyway, talking about that, uh, so yeah, made these rails up. The problem I need to fix is that there, that there, I know it's not pretty, but it's perfectly good, you know, four mil steel and whatnot. That there is a hole for the, uh, if you like, a stud or bolt, whatever you want to say, from the car to go through there. And then I've got to put a, a nut on the inside there. Problem is, all this infrastructure here, which is not particularly needed it's needed a bit it just helps support the top here but it uh, gets in the way and i can't tighten the nut up can't get a spanner in there so i need to erase about five mil around here to be able to get to that one there now that one i had erased just enough so that it works but this one hasn't i'm quite sure how i'm going to do it yet and do it without setting fire to the seat i think it'd be useful to have a plasma cutter or something but anyway too expensive uh, anyway stand by and watch the space Okay, I've cut this back here, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a bit more, eight mil or something. Um, so, and I've painted the inside of the car at the front again, just, it was getting a bit scratched up and messy. Next is to clean the seats up and then try fitting them. Ta-da! Honda Civic seats in that are all bolted in and proper now, so that's good. 
the, the seat's still aren't perfect in that they're just a bit too tall, the base is too tall for the car. But I think for now at least, until I find a nicer, uh, better solution, uh, they're going to do the job. Okay, moving on to the next problem to solve. So, gearbox, two piece prop shaft, steel, and then differential at the back here. Problem is, diff through all sorts of various reasons that are too complex to explain, that's the wrong diff for the car. It's about an inch too long. You can see it has an ABS sensor there. It's because it was for the ABS sensor of the version of the car, and this car is, does not have ABS. So, wrong. So, it's an ABS diff with a non ABS prop shaft, so it's about an inch too long. Uh, and what that's gone and done is smashed into the gearbox and worn the end of the gearbox off. Uh, the gearbox is actually meant to have a protective casing that comes around and covers that uh, covers that that joint, uh, but it's all worn itself off. Uh, long story, but let's just accept that it is that. Various solutions. One includes finding replacing this prop with a uh, uh, ABS prop, which will be an inch shorter, and then would work with the gearbox so that we would gain an extra 25 or so mil play there and then I could go in and if you like repair the end of that gearbox. Now the gearbox doesn't appear to be damaged per se, it's this housing and all the housing parts that have that got smashed off uh, because it was only aluminium most of it, it got chewed away very easily. Well, uh, So that's that, for the time being we're stuck with this and we have to bear in mind as well that these are not easy parts to find after 25, 26 years so um, Right, so and so what we've got at the moment is this donut bearing which supports the first half, the middle of the prop is uh, too hard that way by an inch, okay? And so to sort of make it work, I've bodged, done a bodge in here, bodge in there. Um, it's actually quite, it's better than I remember it. It's probably a good bodge and it'll probably pretty much uh, last forever more or less, but it's not really good enough. And it means this donut bearing is tilted about 10 degrees off and so this you can see this rubber donut you know the rubber donut's going to wear out it's just the whole thing doesn't really work and it's not really fit for purpose so um we're going to take the donut bearing cover housing off uh, measure up the prop to see exactly how far it is out and then create or modify this housing to try and work with this new uh with this new prop shaft alignment, so stand by as I try and figure out what to do. Ok, that's the bracket as I modified it before, I just need to make a decent version of it basically. So, what we're trying to do is move the drill holes back that way, 16mm, but not upset this, this connection point here. So, my idea is, if I separate that there, ok, I'm going to cut that bit off there, not really doing anything now, it's just getting in the way. And I'm gonna get these and I'm gonna offset them 16mm that way from centre line, weld them in so they'll become the new structural point if you like, and the contact patch for the actual car. Infill this and the rest, just make it a bit stronger. That's done. This, I don't think I need to do that much more than basically. Uh, just make what I've done here stronger. So at the moment, that these are just these aren't attached. So I need to weld all these together properly and weld it up. And then I think pretty up a bit. And I think that will do the job. I think. Stand by. Okay. So that's a mock up. Um, up here. Okay. So that's just spot welded in position. And I've tested it with the car, and it all works perfectly. So I'm just going to weld up this half properly and then we'll look at the other half. Okay, this is what we have. So these are the originals if you like. This is a bare copy that I have just in case I messed up, which usually happens. And these are the modified variants. Not very pretty, not even particularly strong, but they'll do the job for the forces that they're going to take. That one there, and that one's modified there, you can see. So I'm kind of Go together like this, ping, and uh, offset our prop shaft by a 16mm laterally and keep it at exactly the right height or within a, a mil or so. Uh, that's it, get these cleaned up, get this painted up, get the prop fitted, all everything back on and see how she goes. Okay, ta da!
Lovely new modified bracket, all nice and safe and strong now, and holding it actually in the right direction, so that bearing should last a bit longer. That should work. That's done. Right, next part of this phase, moving on to the clutch line. So we've got a hydraulic clutch line. Uh, where are we? Uh, comes down from out. Uh, I can't sit. There it is. That one there comes down from the Marston cylinder at the top of the car, down into here. Down into this 10 mil thing, U bend, which is known as a dam uh, hydraulic dampener. It uh, it's, it's kind of does what it in a, does in a plane, I suppose. It dampens the feel of, of the clutch pedal, comes out there, feeds into a flexi pipe there, and goes into the clutch slave cylinder there to operate the clutch operating lever there. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take it all off, get rid of it all. The dampener's going off, we're not going to have a dampener, we're just going to get a uh, stainless steel flexi pipe, which is probably why you should, 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 should use the brake lines, I'll have to do it again at some point, uh, which will go straight from the master cylinder, get rid of everything, and it should go straight onto the slave cylinder. So we're going to get rid of all of that crap, which is great, so uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry about the wind noise. That's what we've taken off the car, which is the existing hydraulic dampener and clutch lines. Clutch, no idea how a hydraulic dampener works. I've never looked into it. If anyone knows, let me know. Or even what its real purpose is, I still don't really understand. Anyway, that's, so that's all come off. Um, which is nice, and it's just been replaced by this basic braided stainless flexi pipe, which is much simpler, and uh, won't rot away, which is nice. So let's go and get that on the car. Okay, welcome back, Valley viewers. Uh, we are now, we've obviously got the brake lines in now and the clutch lines, and we need to go and bleed them. That's what we're going to do. Well, good friend Super T, say hello to Super T to yeah. the Valley viewers. There you go. So we will crack on with that and hopefully none of the bleed valves will snap, slash they probably will. Bye. Okay, welcome back. Bled the clutch line and four brake lines. Um, don't know what that is, it's very easy. We just fill the, the reservoir up on the brake with uh, four dot rated brake fluid and four dot rated brake fluid in the clutch reservoir is fine. Then you turn open the bead valve down on the, you know, the master, uh, the slave cylinder. Bead out the brake caliper or on the um, on the slave cylinder of the clutch and the gearbox. And then you pump the pedal and you push the, you know, you push the new fluid through. Get rid of any air or any aeration that's in the in the old fluid until we've got no air or as little air as we can get. In the line, it's pretty impossible to get air out altogether unless you're going to vacuum treat it, which obviously you can't do here. Uh, that's all done, so we now have brakes so with a relatively good brake feel, clutch with a good brake feel, everything actuates fine. Uh, so that is that. Mechanically, I mean, all we're trying to do is get it all good and legal for an MOT at the moment, which is the English, you know, the English roadworthy uh, test. It's changing there, I just realised. Uh, so, hydraulics are all good now. Um, so we can finally get the wheels back on and take it for a little spin around the drive and just check that everything feels okay uh, and then we can crack on with some bodywork.